Today we're going to be looking at how to use EMVs inside our AWS CDK stacks as well as how to make them easily repeatable and consumable throughout the entire stack through one simple file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new ENV variable in the root of our project, just called .env. We are then going to make sure that it's a git ignore because obviously you don't want to check in your EMV variables into a GitHub project or into any Git project, that's the last thing you want to do. There's also a secret value you just want to keep unique to yourself. Then inside our EMV file, we're going to create a couple of um, environmental variables. One's just going to be called region, for the region we want to deploy to. I'm going to set mine up as EU West 2. And then I'm going to set up another one, which is just going to be called Lambda ENV. Um, doesn't need to be anything special, I'm just going to call this test. This is just so we can use the region environmental variable in our bin file to deploy it to that set region. So you can customize this based on the value passed in if you wanted to share it with other people, for example. Also, we're gonna have this Lambda EMV just so we can demonstrate passing an EMV from this file into a Lambda function for it to then be consumed and used. So after defining our EMV variables, the next thing we need to do is we need to install the .env package, which we can do by jumping over to our terminal and running npmi.env. This then installs the package for us to use. After that, we're then going to create a config file inside our lib directory. So now we've created our config.ts file and we've installed the .env package, let's configure our config file. So we're going to start by doing import as .env from .env. After importing .env, we're then going to configure .env to read the environmental variables from the .env file that we created. We can do that by passing in path and then the path.resolve, our current directory name, and then passing dot dot slash .env to read in those files. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to export a function which will allow us to get the config from that file, which we're going to do like so. And then we're going to return an object. And inside that object, we're going to do the environmental variables that we want to use. So process.env.region. We can also default that here. So should it be undefined for whatever reason, it will fall back to this value, like so. And then we're going to do lambda env, process.lambda env, and I'm just going to leave that one default to blank. So as you can see here, we have one for each of the environmental variables that we've configured. The next thing we're going to do is define a TypeScript type that we can then use in our stack in a second to pass the config through. So I'm going to do export type uh, config props, and then inside of that's going to be region string lambda env string. You could also type these to be the actual values if you wanted to. And then I'm just going to say that the return type of that is the config props. So you can see here it returns that and we know exactly what we're going to be getting. So the next thing we're going to do with our config file finished here is we're then going to configure our bin directory file to consume the region that we just defined as well as pass that config through the stacks. So the first thing we're going to do at the top here is do const config equals get config. So we can actually pull in that config. The next thing we're going to do here is we're going to do env region config dot region. Then going to close that out. So after defining the env, we're then just going to pass in our config from here. Don't worry about this TypeScript error for now. We're just going to, we're going to resolve that in a second in the lib directory. So let's do that. What we want to do here is we want to define a new type, which is going to be type AWS env stack props, stack props equals and in here, we're then just going to do config read only and then pass in that config props from early. There we go. And then we're just going to change that out there. And as you can see now, our TypeScript error has just got resolved. With our type defined here and consumed here, we're just going to make this so it is always passed in. That will allow us to bring our config out from the props, which means we then have access to our environmental variables inside of the stack file here, nice and easy. So the next thing we're going to do to show the consuming of this is we're going to create a new Lambda function. So we're going to go resources. And then inside of that, we're just going to call it test lambda.ts. Inside here, we're just going to define a new Lambda function. Nice, easy, quick one. Get rid of all of these. And all that's going to do is it's going to do console.log process.env.lambda.env. Cool. 
So then back in our lib directory, we're now just gonna define that saying new node.js function, pass this in, give it an ID. And then inside of here, we're gonna give it the entry point, which is the file path we just defined. We're then gonna do handler handler. Then we do environment, lambda emb config.emb, and then close it out. If you wanted to, you could also pass things through such as duration and runtime, but I'm not gonna do that here. And with that Node.js function definition, it then concludes the writing of our stack. So let's jump over to the terminal and then let's deploy it. So you can see here in the deploy pipeline, you can see that the region is deploying to is EUS2, which lines up with the EMV function that I wrote here. So yes, I am happy for those changes to be deployed and then I'll let that run through. And then once this is all finished, we'll have a look in the AWS dashboard to make sure it's all deployed okay, and we'll trigger the Lambda function to make sure the environmental variable got passed through correctly. So I'll see you in a second. So as you can see here, the CDK stack has just finished deploying, and I have our Lambda function that we wrote here in my dashboard, which we can click on and have a look at. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump back into the terminal, and then we're gonna do AWS Lambda invoke function name, which is the function name from there, invoke type event and the out file is a line and then that's just being invoked so we'll just get rid of that output file the hyphen and then we'll give that a couple of seconds and then we will have a look in our cloudwatch dashboard for the log stream outputs so as you can see here we have the one log stream go into here i triggered this one earlier as well just to make sure it's working but you can see here it outputs test which is exactly exactly what we expected to see because if we look at our EMV variables again, we had lambda EMV test and we're just console logging out here. So that's working as expected. So you can see here we've deployed to the EU West 2 region, London, which is again what we expected to see based on our region here. And then as you can see here, the lambda function works fine as well. And with that, it's brought us to the end of the video. We've looked at in this video how we can use an EMV variable as well as a get config file function to easily and repeatedly consume environmental variables from our AWS CDK stacks, as well as the resources and services that we define within those stacks. If you'd like to see the example code that's being used for this project, then you can head over to the GitHub repo that's linked down below, and you can find the example code for all of my CDK projects, including this one. So I hope you found this video helpful, and until next time, thank you for watching.